Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Animal Tone Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. So coming back to bioethics then, so far as, as a concept, uh, you, you mentioned so what's important is autonomy, compassion, respect. Mm -hmm. And I think also there in kind of some of what you were mentioning there are questions of biotechnology. Mm -hmm. So using them as chimeras, chimeras, chimeras yeah. um, you know, growing ears on rats or organs in pigs that, that biotechnology is implicated in questions of bioethics as well. Um, but this is kind of one stream that we were talking about with regards to health. You said that there's another stream uh, when it comes to talking about bioethics, which is related to environment or uh, well, the environment and environmental justice. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe unpack that stream for us a little? Yeah. And, and actually, I think this stream involves health, too. It, it, it can be easy to think that that health ethics questions are these small scale individual questions about the rights of doctors and patients and so on. Uh, but but actually public health matters a lot too, and global health matters a lot too. Uh, these, these broad global changes that affect health outcomes in, in the aggregate. And, and I think these questions matter much more than, than we, we might be suggesting by how many people are focusing on the individual small scale, small scale stuff. And, and so when it comes to animal ethics, these questions include, for example, um, how might our treatment of animals be contributing to global health and environmental threats like pandemics and climate change? And then uh, conversely, how might global health and environmental threats like pandemics and climate change be impacting human and non-human populations at the same time? And I think these questions are incredibly important and also uh, incredibly neglected, even though the world is currently going through uh, a pandemic and has been experiencing an increase in floods and fires and heat waves and, and other extreme weather mm -hmm. events that will be more frequent and intense in a world reshaped by human activity. So, so those are the questions that I think we really need to be paying much more attention to, in addition to continuing to pay attention to the need to treat animals better as, as research subjects and, and uh, medical patients. So you, you, you said they're humans and non-humans mm -hmm. um, that we've tended to. So this, this implies to me that we've tended to, when looking at pandemics and when looking at questions of global health, mm -hmm. focused on humans. What is it that you're hoping or what is it that you think, when you say and non-humans, what is happening in that move? What does it mean to include animals in these questions? I think it means several things. First of all, it means taking seriously how our uses of animals are contributing to these global threats. I, I imagine you know and many of your listeners know that industries that exploit and exterminate non-human animals like factory farming and deforestation and the wildlife trade are in various ways major drivers of global health and environmental problems uh, like disease outbreaks and climate change related floods and fires and heat waves uh, when we bring into existence hundreds of billions of non-human animals and clear land for them to live and to grow plants for them to eat uh, and, and then move them from place to place and, and so on and so forth. That all contributes to the development and, and spread of infectious diseases and it also consumes land and water and it produces pollution and greenhouse gas emissions, and it contributes to deforestation, which also spreads diseases and reduces biodiversity, which spreads diseases and uh, gets rid of trees, which capture and store carbon dioxide. So for all in all of these ways, the, the harms that we inflict on non-human animals are wrapped up in uh, the, the harms that we inflict on global health and in the environment. And so when I emphasize the need to include non-humans, part of what I mean is really paying attention to how these industries that exploit and exterminate animals are, are in very large part responsible for these problems. And we need to phase down and ultimately end some of these industries, factory farming, deforestation, and the wildlife trade as part of our climate change mitigation efforts, as part of our pandemic mitigation efforts. Um, but, but then the other thing that I mean, and, and the more neglected point, is that animals are stakeholders for our public health and environmental policies too. Animals are infected, affected by these global health and environmental uh, changes too. And so we really need to consider how these global changes are affecting humans and non-humans if we want to reduce harm across the board rather than only reducing harm for a very small percentage mm -hmm. of affected individuals.